Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the tutorial series. My name is Caleb, and we're going to begin starting to talk about administration inside of Linux, specifically talking about users, groups, and permissions. This is where you get to see some of the powerful parts of Linux and see some of the different capabilities. You see, Linux isn't just designed to be a single user system. You can actually have multiple users, and these multiple users can share files, and basically you can imagine an environment where you have one centralized Linux computer and numerous people connect to that computer at the same time and have the ability to share files between each other and protect their files from people who aren't supposed to see them. So there's all kinds of different permissions that come with Linux that you should learn about. So to start off, you should understand a little bit about groups. So you can say groups and it'll tell you what groups your user belongs to. And if you want to know who you are, the command is who am I? So we're on an account named Parallels, and that's because I'm using the Parallels software for this VM, and it defaults to Parallels. But for you, it might have been your name or maybe some, you know, something like student or something like that. And another command you should know is ID, and this gives a lot of other stuff, some numbers. And you can see in here we have UID equals 1000. That is your user ID. Then you have a GID or a group ID, which is also 1000. And then we have groups with a bunch of different groups in here which are the same as these ones here but now it includes the ID of those groups as well so we have 1000, 4, 24, 27, 30, 46, and 116 and all of these groups have some permissions around them the ones that are most important are probably starting off the group that is your group ID you can see it's right here and then the next one is probably this pseudo group which in this case is number 27. So when you're in the sudo group, you have elevated permissions when you use the command sudo. So if you can use sudo, that means you have the group sudo. Now when you say id, it defaults to yourself, but if there's multiple users, you could go ahead and type in the name of that user, and that'll show you that user's permissions. If you're wondering, okay, well, how do I know what I can put here? Well, the easiest way, which takes advantage of the UI, is we could just log out yep log out and now we're given a login screen with the user parallels if you had other users here they would show up here so we'll see that later on and there's also the option to type in a username and password so it might not list everybody but that's a quick way on how you can see some other users so where do these users come from well they come from a database which is a text file on this operating system that has a list of all of the users so let's talk about how to find that We'll go to the terminal and we're going to say get ent password with just wd. Hit enter and here's a lot of information that can be a little overwhelming. If you scroll through here though, you should be able to find your user in here. And you can see mine is right here. So there's a lot of other users that aren't used to log in, they're not like a typical user. So how do we basically clear out this list to just get the typical users? Well, it's based off a convention. So if we look at our user account, it starts with a thousand. And then the next user account is gonna be a thousand and one. And that number will just keep going up all the way up to 60,000. We can get a specific user by saying get int password and then passing in their user ID. In this case, we we'll use a thousand and that will just get my user account. If there were more accounts, you would just say 1001, 1002, and keep doing that all the way up to 60,000. So there's actually a shorter way of doing this, and we can expand these numbers out using curly braces, and inside of these curly braces, say your starting number, 1000, dot, dot, 60,000, and that's gonna get all of the users between 1,000 and 60,000. Now this 1,000 here may not be the same for your operating system if you're not on Ubuntu, but you know, say it's 500, you're gonna do the same thing. You just might have to change the numbers a little bit. So we'll go back and we will add some users and see what happens when we issue this command. We should see those users show up. We're gonna start fresh and we're gonna say sudo add user and we'll just call it student. Now for this, we will put in the password for our current account. So we will type that out. And I'll go through a process to add this user and create their home directory home slash student. Now we give this account a password 
So this is what that user is going to use to log in. And there we go. Now you can go in and fill this info out. I'm just gonna hit enter. Don't really think that's important. Yes. All right, so we created that user and now we should be able to log in to Ubuntu with that user. So we'll say switch user. And going into here now we have parallels and student. So they will have their own Ubuntu environment, just like switching users in Windows or Mac. However, we can also do it from the terminal. So I'm gonna show you that process now. Inside of the terminal, we can use SU, which means switch user or substitute user. And then we can say what account we want to switch to. So we will say SU student, put in the password for the student account. And there we go, we are now on the student account logged in so when we say who am I it says student now you'll notice we're still in the home parallels directory which is the home directory for the other user so we could say CD to get back to our home directory and now we're in home student if you want to do that process automatically when you switch users put a hyphen before the name so we'll say switch user hyphen parallels put in the parallels password or whatever the user password is and now it'll automatically change to the home directory for that account. All right, so now the command we issued earlier, ID, we can pass in the username student to get the information about that student. And you'll notice here that they're in a lot less groups. The user ID is 1001, the group ID is also 1001, and you'll notice that each new account gets a group of the same name as the user, but all those other groups do not exist here. So this account cannot use the sudo command, for example. And don't forget, we can see all of the users with get int password 1000 dot dot 60,000. And there we go, we got parallels and student. All right, hopefully that was a good introduction to users. In the next video, we're going to get a little bit more hands-on experience with groups, which are a very important part of Linux. Stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you then. Peace out.